guardrails to be installed at all ferry crossing points in Sarawak. Malaysia to begin COVID-19 vaccine rolled out in February. Good afternoon, thanks for joining us and you're watching Updates at Noon. I'm Jessica Lee. The body of Siti Aisha Abdullah, 36, who died when the four-wheel drive vehicle she was in plunged into Sungai Batang Lupar at Triso Ferry Point, was laid to rest at Kampung Hulu Muslim Cemetery, Sri Aman, around 6.22pm yesterday. The burial was attended by her husband, Muhammad Hamza Razali, as well as relatives and friends. Prayers were held for Siti Aisha along with her five children, No Shuhada Muhammad Hamza, 16, Cairo Nisa, 14, Muhammad Ayman, 7, Muhammad Mustaqim, 5, and Muhammad Ahmad, 4 months, at Banda Sri Aman Mosque before the burials were conducted. Besides Siti Aisha and her five children, her sister Lorna Ting, 33, and two of her children, Alvin Pang, 12, and Wallace Pang, 7, were also killed. Meanwhile, the bodies of Lorna Ting and her children arrived in Cebu at 12.54 a.m. today after their autopsies were completed at Hospital Sri Aman. Their cremation ceremony will be held on Tuesday at Nirvana Memorial Park. In a 3.30 p.m. incident on Friday, the four-wheel drive vehicle driven by Lorna Ting plunged into Sungai Batang Lupar at the Triso Ferry Jetty about 100 kilometers from Sri Aman. In a related development, Sarawak Deputy Chief Minister 2, Tan Sri Dr. James Jemut Masing said strong guard railings will be built at all ferry crossing points in the state to prevent a recurrence of the tragedy. He added that the State Public Works Department, JKR, had been instructed to start erecting the guardrails immediately. Tan Sri Dr. James, while visiting the incident site, said that by building strong guardrails, nothing can fall off from the ferry boarding and alighting point. He also said that the four-wheel drive car fell from the ferry landing point, not from the ferry. A four-month-old baby was among nine people who perished after the four-wheel drive vehicle they were in went out of control and plunged into the river at the ferry point at about 3.30 p.m. on Friday. He also said that a tragedy should be taken as a lesson to all and everybody should follow the SOPs outlined by the authorities while using public facilities. Sarawak state government has allocated a sum of 3 billion ringgit to build bridges in Laluan Utama Kadua, which connects coastal areas in the state. The Health Ministry will begin implementing the National COVID-19 Immunisation Plan as early as February this year. Its Minister, Datuk Sri Adam Baban, said the initiative will involve some 1 million doses of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines that will be used to inoculate the rakyat as part of efforts to break the chain of virus transmissions in the country. Explaining further, he said the frontliners will be among the first to receive the vaccination apart from those suffering from non-communicable diseases such as diabetes and kidney failure. He said the remaining 6.2 million doses of vaccines will be provided for the other 80% of Malaysians in stages. Dengan uh, kaedah life and livelihood ini, iaitu mengimbangi ekonomi dengan uh, kesihatan, kita menjangkakan uh, melandaikan lengkuk itu makan masa yang lebih uh, lama tetapi berkesan eh, untuk uh, kita terus uh, uh, memutuskan uh, rantaian COVID-19 dan dengan adanya program uh, pelalian uh, ataupun uh, imunisasi kebangsaan untuk COVID-19, uh, kita menjangkakan uh, selepas itu uh, kita boleh uh, menurunkan kes uh, dengan baik. Eh. Malaysia is expected to receive more doses of COVID-19 vaccines in April and May this year. The Ministry of Health is expecting an increase in COVID-19 positive cases following nationwide active tracing among foreign workers at construction sites and factories. Now, COVID-19 screenings were made compulsory for foreign workers which commenced on the 1st of January. 
Health Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Adam Baba said the screenings would involve 800,000 foreign workers in the federal territories Selangor, Negeri Sembilan, Penang and Sabah. He said a total of 70,000 foreign workers had undergone screenings from August until the 31st of December last year. Datuk Sri Dr. Adam said MOH would immediately isolate those who tested positive and expedite contact tracing to prevent the virus from spreading. Tapi perlu kita lihat juga, kita kita juga ada kes discharge eh. Selepas uh, 10 hari mereka dirawat di PKRC, mereka juga dia discharge ataupun dikeluarkan daripada pusat pusat tersebut lah. Untuk semalam uh, 2,230 discharge eh, berbanding dengan masuk 2,086 eh. On the ministry's preparations to face the increase in the number of positive COVID-19 cases, the health minister said MOH was expected to add up to 10,000 beds at the quarantine centre in Mayips to cater for the increase in COVID-19 patients. Nine new COVID-19 clusters have been identified in the past 24 hours, with five of them involving workplaces. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah, through a statement, said the workplace clusters were detected through targeted screenings, while the other clusters were detected through screening of symptomatic individuals, close contact screenings and screening of individuals from high-risk areas. The five clusters involving workplaces are identified as Harum Cluster and Dewani Cluster in Johor Bahru, Kajurina Construction Site Cluster and Rengam Cluster in Petaling Sepang and Klang and Jalan BBN Cluster in Seremban. The Harum Cluster reported the highest increase in new cases where 206 individuals from 435 screened were tested positive for the virus. Tan Sri Dr. Norhisham said that to date, the Kajarina Construction Site Cluster recorded 53 COVID-19 positive cases, Dewani Cluster 25 cases, Rengam Cluster 20 cases and Jalan BBN Cluster recording 27 cases. Meanwhile, the remaining four new clusters were identified as Batu Lapan Cluster in Tambunan, Ranau and Kota Belut, Beluka Cluster in Machang, Kolam Permai Cluster in Kuala Trungganu, Kemaman and Petaling, and Madur Custa in Maradong and Cebu. Tan Sri Dr. Norhisham said as of yesterday, Batulapan Cluster recorded 52 COVID-19 positive cases followed by Beluka Cluster, 17 cases, Kolam Permai Cluster, 9 cases, and Madur Cluster registered 8 cases. The Health DG also announced four new clusters had ended yesterday, making the total number of active clusters being monitored now stands at 229 clusters. Now, all educational institutes under the Ministry of Education, as well as private educational institutions registered with the Ministry, which includes international schools, will be open according to the 2021 academic calendar year. Now, Education Ministry in a statement said that the opening dates can be referred to at the Ministry's official website, while for the private institutions, the dates are subject to their respective academic calendar. This opening involves educational institutions nationwide, including in areas which are placed under the Conditional Movement Control Order, or CMCO. The Ministry also stressed that the operation of all educational institutions is subject to the management and operation of Teacher Education Institute and Matriculation College in new norms guidelines. The Ministry will always monitor the current situation of the operation of educational institutions together with the Ministry of Health and the National Security Council to to ensure that the health and safety of educational institutions continue to be given priority. Now, floods in Johor have now affected seven districts with the number of evacuees at 5,818 people from 1,540 families as of 8 a.m. today, compared to 1,780 victims from 500 families last night. Johor State Health and Environment Committee Chairman R. Vidyanathan said Mersing and Pontian were the latest flood-affected districts apart from Kluang, Kota Tinggi, Johor Bahru, Kulai and Batu Pahat. 
28 more temporary relief centers or PPS have been opened so far with two in Mersing, one in Pontian, 19 PPS in Kluang, 14 in Kota Tinggi, 13 relief centers in Johor Bahru, 5 in Kulai District and 2 in Batu Pahat, bringing the total number of PPS operating to 56. In Mersing, a total of 57 individuals were evacuated to two PPS, namely Sekolah Kebangsaan SK Tenglu and SK Aipapan, which houses 16 people involving four families and 41 evacuees from 10 families respectively. In Pontian, six people from one family in Kampung Ulu Pulai were placed at Dewan Masjid Kampung Ulu Pulai, which was opened at 10 p.m. last night. So far, the five existing PPS have recorded an increase in the number of evacuees, with relief centres in Kluang currently accommodating 1,826 evacuees, Kota Tinggi 868, Johor Bahru 2,452, Kulai 581 and Batu Pahat 28. Jalan Johor Bahru Kota Mersing has been closed to all types of vehicles after it was inundated with 0.2 meters of water. An elderly person in Johor became the first casualty of flood after falling into a two-meter ditch and drowned yesterday. Halija Majid, 59, was not aware of the ditch's location due to heavy flood at her residence at Kampung Chonto, Kluang. In a statement, Kluang Fire and Rescue Station Operations Commander Samsul Amri Mama Shahab said the victim was believed to have fallen into the swollen ditch at 12.30 p.m. He said nine firemen were rushed to the scene after receiving an emergency call regarding the incident. He added that the victim was declared dead at the scene by a Ministry of Health personnel. <coughs> The public in Trangano, especially those in flood-prone areas, are reminded to be on high alert. Now, Trangano Civil Defence Force Director Lieutenant Colonel P.A. Che Adam Abdurrahman said, based on meteorological department readings, heavy rains are expected to occur simultaneously in more than one places, causing a tidal war collision. He added that the meteorological department had also issued a yellow level weather warning with heavy rains and waves as high as 4.5 metres and this is expected to last until the 4th of January. Jika berlaku hujan lebat di kawasan-kawasan hulu, uh, ditambah pula dengan air pasang tinggi kalian untuk air itu keluar ke kawasan hilir agak sukar dan uh, penduduk mungkin boleh mengalami banjir di kawasan yang rendah ataupun di pinggir-pinggir sungai. The high tide phenomenon hit most of the coastal areas in the state since late Thursday night, causing seawaters to overflow to roads and residential areas in Kuala Besut. Sports Spurs return to top four with 3-0 win over Leeds. Some local stories first. Professional mixed doubles player Go Liu Ying is confident that the COVID-19 pandemic would not dash her hopes of qualifying for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, although the coronavirus has severely disrupted tournament schedules. Now, Liu Ying said she and her partner Chan Ping Soon remain optimistic despite the race to Tokyo being tight, as they are now ranked seventh in Badminton World Federation or BWF rankings. Liu Ying and Ping Sun have to compete with two other national pairs, Tan Kian Ming Lai Pei Jing and Go Sun Hua Shivon Jamie Lai for the two Olympic spots. Liu Ying and Ping Sun are scheduled to play in the back-to-back -back Yonex Thailand Open from the 12th to 17th of January and Toyota Thailand Open from the 19th to 24th of January. Nevertheless, the two tournaments, which offer prize money of one million US dollars each, do not offer qualifying points for Tokyo Olympics which will be held from the 23rd of July to the 8th of August. Liu Ying and Ping Sun won silver at the Rio Olympics in 2016. BWF recently announced that Olympics qualifying tournaments would resume at the Swiss Open to be held from the 2nd to the 7th of March, followed by the Indian Open from the 11th to the 16th of May before the final race to Tokyo list is issued on the 18th of May. Now, these rankings will also be used to seed players for the Olympics competition. 
The top 16 pairs will qualify for the Olympics, with the country limited to two pairs. And that's it from us in our top stories for our government order building of guardrails at all ferry points. Now tune in to News at 10 coming up at 10 p.m. on Saloran Brita RTM on My Free News Channel 123. Now you can also stream the news by surfing RTM's MyClick. Thank you very much. I'm Jessica Lee. Stay tuned to TV2.